As you know, I like going around on a Saturday when I record these videos. Nobody's here. I got the run of the place to myself. So this is our, our lobby. If you ever come here for a tour, which you are most welcome to do, this is where you first come. There's a, a phone over there. You pick it up and go, I'm here for a tour. Or, <laughs> or we do appreciate it when you make an appointment. But hey, we're, we're family. So if you just happen to show up, we'll, we'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. And this is where you sit. There's my friend Nipper and some books and a pair of FR30s. These were some of the original FR30s that just aren't, we, we can't sell them. I mean, there's, there's too many things going on, but they are sure pretty. So we decided to just put them out here as museum pieces. Okay, uh, what have we got here? Peter from Vienna, Austria, which I think we're going to be, is it June? The Vienna Hi-Fi Show. I think we're gonna try and make that, so that'd be nice. Anyway, Peter writes to me and he says, Paul, some designers argue that simpler crossovers sound better, while others rely on complex networks to achieve accuracy. From your experience designing speakers, how do you decide how much complexity is enough and when it becomes too much? Well, that's a great question. And let's be clear, yes, I have designed speakers. No, I have not designed a speaker that you could buy. And that's all done by our genius speaker designer, Chris Brunhaber. There is a lot of thought that has to go into the crossover. At the end of the day, let's look at a speaker. It's a box, and then you have drivers, and then the way you connect those drivers is through a crossover. And the box is important, certainly for dimensions, you gotta make sure that it's you know not gonna vibrate or anything, but at the end of the day, it's a box. Then the next thing you have to worry about when you're designing speakers is your drivers, the quality of those drivers. And at PS Audio and at Genesis, at Infinity, any of the places that I've ever been associated with, of course, you put as much energy as you possibly can into getting the very best drivers possible. And that's one of the reasons why we use these high-tech planar drivers. I've just, ever since Arnie Newdell introduced me to the planar where the moving membrane has less mass than the actual air that it's pushing. I mean, that's remarkable because you can't say the same thing about a tweeter, a dome tweeter or anything, you know, AMT, anything. But a planer, oh, planers, planers are it. But, okay, and then woofers, you gotta make sure they have low distortion. Anyway, so you have these drivers. Now you have to hook them all together. Well, one way or the other, Unless you have, for instance, a, just a, a single driver, which I would never recommend, you want to have at least a two-way, a tweeter and a woofer at a minimum. Now you have to make sure that they come together to, so where the woofer isn't trying to be a tweeter and where the tweeter isn't trying to be a woofer. So that's what the crossover does. It, it rolls off the top of the woofer and it rolls off the bottom of the tweeter. Now when you do that, the two have to intermingle so that at some point they're crossing over each other. So the tweeter is doing some of the bass and the bass is doing some of the tweeter. And then that point where you blend them together, you don't want to hear that seam. Kind of like putting, you know, I don't know, when you sew something, you want to have invisible seam. You don't want to see all the seams and you certainly don't want to hear them. So some people, really want just the simplest crossover, 6 dB per octave, just simple slopes, and there's an advantage to that and there's a big disadvantage to it. Others have major complexity in their crossovers and like anything, it's all in how you do it. It's all in the results that you wind up getting. So Chris spends 80%, 75% of his time designing the crossover. It is the most critical of all things inside of a loudspeaker. How they hook together. When we do tweaks, when we sit and listen and I'll go, you know, Chris, this or that, or 
could we fix this? It's all done in the crossover. Very, very important. I don't know that I would say a complex crossover is better than a simple one. It all depends on the driver. It all depends on the designer. But at the end of the day, it is the most critical component that there is in a loudspeaker. And thank goodness we have somebody as bright as Chris that figures all this out. All right. Thanks for your question. Thank you.